Okay, so located at the heart of Communities Nationwide, Centre continues to celebrate its association with the GA All-Ireland Hurling Senior Championship through its hashtag We Are Hurling campaign. The campaign not only recognises and celebrates individuals who help make hurling great, it also unearths those individuals' passions on and off the pitch. To see how Centre continues to champion the hurling community across Ireland, follow the hashtag We Are Hurling or at Centre IRL on Twitter. Uh, Keen Lynch is here with us this morning. How are you? How are you getting on, Liz? Um, the week of an All-Ireland Hurling final, you're not supposed to be in the studios <laughs> talking stuff about the game. I uh, know, it's... Uh as I said there before, it's going to be a tough old week, like building up to a game. But I suppose it's going to be very interesting too. To Pereira and Kilkenny there, the history they've had playing each other and down through the years, so it's going to be very interesting. Before we get onto that, let's talk a little bit about the pain of the week. <laughs> Is this something you have to kind of take into, like, because if you if you want to be a really great team, you've got to do it again, right? Yeah. And like, there's no reason why you won't. You're all the right age profile, but you need to learn from the experience and channel this pain and remember that what this is like next year for... Yeah, I suppose the minute the final whistle went against Kilkenny, it was kind of a massive blow and a massive kind of low on a lot of our lives, like, and the week after it, I suppose, probably the lowest we've been in a while, like, and it's something you don't get used to, or I suppose we all go through life and have more kind of downfalls and losses in life, but losing all our semi final it's a tough place to get to and it's a tough place to go back to, so I suppose it's a massive kind of thing we have to take as a learning and try and drive on and get back there but so what Kilkenny showed that massive intensity and a massive work rate can drive on and get you to where you want to go like. Do you need to, have you talked about it as a group, was there a post-mortem where you, know, like, or uh, does that happen next year really? I suppose it'll be next year like because we were kind of back with our clubs kind of straight away and yeah. club championship last week so so we have to kind of divulge it ourselves and kind of put it into the back of the minds and get back and get focused for club championship too, which is massive too. Like. Loads of people said, uh, the game was over after 15, 20 minutes, Kilkenny just came in, blew the doors off, and that was the end of that. But actually, if you look back at it, <laughs> you had loads of chances to get back in the game. Yeah. And it was wayward shooting as much as anything that did for you. Yeah, I suppose when a few things don't go your way, like a few wides or a few kind of missed shots or missed chances, you're kind of chasing the game and we couldn't... If we got back within a to draw or whatever, it could have changed, but we never got back to draw or to lead the game. So that's something we're kinda that's kind of annoying us and kinda stuck in the mind too, like that Kilkenny just kept pushing and kept going and you know, great credit due to them and massive character showing that they didn't leave it slip and look they got their win and they're in an all Ireland final. Did you take them too lightly? Was there any sense of that in the build up to the game at all? No, jeez, no. We've massive respect for Kilkenny, like even playing them last year down in Turles, you know, there was only a few points in it towards the end they led and we got back on top and it's always kind of tight margins and it just shows what Cody has done with the players and what the players do for the management there as well they've drove on and they keep going and they keep fighting and they're back in the Ireland final so it's great credit to them like. What's that like in the opening 10-15 minutes when you realise immediately oh god this is Kilkenny back to their best in terms of their intensity? Yeah, uh, sure like no one, you don't have to be under any illusion to Kilkenny like they always bring that intensity and the hurlers they have too is massive but for ourselves like we took us a while to get going and to try and get the grips of the game. We never found our flow and never gotten got our full kind of range. And it's kind of something that you can say it was either our own as players, like we never got going. But Kilkenny had a massive kind of work rate and kind of stopped us from playing too, which was huge. And I suppose the regret in our, for me personally, is the regret that we'll, we'll live with for the next few months and for the next few years that we didn't get over that line like and drive on. But that's sport and they're kind of things you have to take in life, you know. It's been a fairly amazing 12 months, if you kind of consider back to this time last year when you were building up to the All-Ireland Final, yeah. to roll on and win the league and to kind of be so successful up to that point. All, all great teams do have setbacks, and it's kind of how you deal with the setback that defines how great the team ultimately is considered. Yeah, like John just said, it has been a great year, we'll say 2018, leading 2019 to the league and the championship, but within ourselves, our own expectations like are high, and we'd love to have gone on to get to an All-Ireland Final and drive things on again, but... Yeah, great teams do learn from learn more. You learn more in games you lose than you do in games you win. And for us, it's about bouncing back. But no one knows where we'll be tomorrow or what tomorrow might bring. So, so we'll have to cherish, cherish the moments we've had and try and prepare for the future. Like, is that something you enjoy? The constant tag of All Ireland champions and All Ireland favourites in some quarters throughout the whole year. Uh, it is. It was great, obviously. But I suppose in 2019 kind of calendar begin it was kind of something we kind of shut down and 2018 was over and we were all Ireland champions but that's changed now and I suppose between Kilkenny and Tipperary to try and drive on and they have the opportunity to win an All-Ireland it's something that is obviously going to be hurting hurt a lot of us in Limerick like but something that will, will be massive ammunition going forward to try and get back on back on the horse and drive on you know What about Tip? Like at the start of the 
championship season, a lot of people would have had Tip as the, the favourites of the Ireland. How do you think this game is going to go? Because... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's a very hard one to call it. I feel very diplomatic here, isn't it? Like, but, uh, you definitely don't. Don't worry about the phone scene. It's overrated. Uh, no, I suppose <clears throat> Tipperary, like you see their forwards and their team and penalty they have this year as well is unbelievable. Like Seamus Kenlon's on fire and you know, when he's going well, Tipperary seems to be going well and I suppose going to Kilkenny then as well. After playing them, we see what they're capable of and the kind of heights they've reached. So it's going to be a game that's there's going to be nothing between and I'd say it'll end up going down to the wires and if I was going to call it it'd be a draw like I yeah, know <laughs> <laughs> what was the biggest reason why you managed to give Tip a bit of a thumping in the Munster final uh, I don't know I wouldn't call it a thumping no Jeez, uh, I suppose we just kind of had a bit of a look as well on the day like you know Tipperary we played them the week, the week before blowing Thurless and they beat us and I suppose having to play them a week later it was always a hard game to try and go into but for us we just focused on ourselves and in the Gaelic grounds we <clears throat> wanted to put on a massive performance for the home crowd and look thank God we got over the line and won that day but as the year went on Tipperary and All-Ireland final like and we're not and that's, uh, that's where you want to be at the end of the year you want to be in Crow Park playing in front of 80,000 people and drive massive envy towards Tipperary and Kilkenny and Jerome made the best team win too Jerome. I was talking to a couple of hurling people um, on Saturday night and they were saying that they'd, um, they'd recently seen the uh, tip Kilkenny, it might have been the four in a row or the five in a row, one of those games, and just the complete difference in how the game was played from then to now, that it's far more of a, that all the teams now are playing possession and they're playing, a, like the, the whole notion of man on man seems to have disappeared. But I'm not sure, has it? Like, no, uh, I think a lot of people look into it too much and try and analyse the whole thing and break it down into the smallest detail. Like, there's been tactics and there's been kind of different things going on in hurling since the beginning of it. Like, and I suppose evolution is huge. And when hurling evolves, so does the thought process and so does the way the game has to be played. So it's like rugby and soccer and football at the moment. When players are getting faster and when the sport is, lads are getting bigger, the sport has to evolve. and. I suppose hurling is probably one of the greatest games in the world at the moment to watch, and it's brilliant the way it's gone. So, at the minute, because um, we had uh, Miel Dunhu in, and he was saying even you guys were different, a different challenge to what they'd seen in previous years, where you were, he, the phrase he used was breaking the line, and that actually it felt like this was something that kind of uh, hurling had learned a bit from football. If you have strong players who can uh, take a tackle on and, and break a tackle and then lay off the pass you've actually you've taken two men out there because there's your man and you're giving it to somebody else who's obviously taking oh, it at right, the right uh, yeah but that's the way it's gone as I said like you know a lot of it is instinct too like you know there's times where we can deliver the ball long yeah so tell me about that will you tell me about the instinct versus what you're <laughs> what, what you're programmed to do uh, so we're all programmed to go out and play and whatever obstacles put in front of you play it as you see it like you know we all train hard and we all go through a different type of process but and are you trained to, to take a tackle whenever you can and to uh, I suppose you're kind of trained to make the best option like you know so if you can if you see that you've, if you break the tackle there and you get behind your man in your space you go with that but if you see that there's a ball on inside you'll give that in as well so I suppose a lot of it isn't you're not being drilled down to say you have to do that or you, you have to do this I suppose if you're analysing games there might be a uh, kind of constant kind of act happening in the game that lads might be breaking the line but it's just the way the game goes and it all depends on the teams that are playing too like the way the team's set up Do you feel that your hurling instinct has got better over the last couple of years that you can almost coach your way into that situ situation? Yes, I don't know about that either no, but uh, I suppose as you get kind of mature in the game too you, you have to try and make more decisions and the way hurling's gone as I said like there's lads are getting bigger quicker, faster stronger like so you do have to evolve and make decisions on the spot like and kind of go with your best instinct too, like if a ball is on inside, give it in, but if you can carry it and draw a man, and as you say, pop it out, then that's the best option, but I suppose like everything is changes and changes good, I suppose. Do you remember the goal that Wexford scored where some people were worried it was a square ball or not um, against Tip? Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the best goals. That was one of the best team goals I've seen. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah, us, yeah. The, the skill level and the pace at which everything happened and also the sense that, okay, I know there's going to be space up here if I keep running. Yeah. Um, how, how how off the training ground is that? I suppose you work like in training you try and do as much as you can as you'll be doing the match like you try and replicate everything so when you get out, to, out onto a pitch like Crow Park if you can see in front of you that there's space to run into run into it like you know, if there's no space deliver that ball or play to the best man. But what drills are you doing that like <laughs> do you know what I mean? Trying to give away everything here now. <laughs> um, no there's no real 
like I know people are trying to look into it and try and break it down and think that there is a massive mastermind behind the whole thing, but lads, lads are training tomorrow noon night and they're trying to develop their hurling skills and when you can carry a ball and see that your man is on your shoulder and if he's in a better position, the way that extra goal was scored, play it across and to make the right decisions. But there's times where we don't make the right decisions and you might hit a bad ball. Yeah. That mightn't be the right option, and so the coaches about trying to make the right decisions as yeah, opposed decision, to yeah. doing the same thing again and again. Decision and again. making is huge, sure. It's like everything in every sport. Like the right decision can change a game or can for the better or the worse. You know. Yeah. The other thing uh, that you talked there, lads are getting bigger, and we've kind of seen that. Um, you know, you, people look at the evolution of Conor Callan over yeah. the last couple of years, and, and some of your teammates as well. Yeah. What is that like? What? How much work has gone into transforming bodies at this point? Like, is it three, four days a week in the gym? Is it? Is it uh, a little bit of lifting every day? Is it? There is, I suppose, for hurling and sport in general. The GA has kind of gone so full time now. Lads kind of have sacrificed everything. So you know, you're getting up on a Monday morning there, you're finishing work at five, and you're going straight to to the gym for half five and you're spending an hour and a half in there and you're doing the gym twice a week and you're probably training three times on top of that so you're constantly going if you're not doing aerobic you're doing weights inside in the gym I suppose looking at Conor Callaghan there like the way he's developed over the last few years is massive and he's performed his show as well as a result like you know yeah impossible to get off the ball <laughs> yeah so what have you been doing to, to bulk up uh, eating a few extra dinners like you <laughs> see the old Billy <laughs> I know uh, I suppose everyone tries to better them, themselves as, a, as an athlete like you know if it's doing extra gym work or extra hurling drills you try and do that but I suppose gym is massive as I said the way it's gone so the strength is important to your yeah. game especially in midfield yeah. where when I come in onto I know I said it before when I come in onto the Limer team at 18 I think it was about 73 or 4 kg like and sure if we were 74 or 73 kg now at 18 or very light like but I kind of made a decision myself and Joe Connor there is our strength and conditioning coach kind of give us programs and everyone's different like so I give me a program just trying and fill up a small bit and I kind of filled up probably the wrong way now in the last weeks but <laughs> try and go the same age you know it's called wintering well I thought it was <laughs> wintering well yeah. it's plenty old, of dinners like. an old tradition <laughs> I know but it's important too like do you enjoy it though like, is it, or is that part of it is it just a grind no I, I actually do enjoy the gym and I do enjoy training like it's a great way to kind of clear the head and clear the mind because lives are so busy these days and there's so much pressures I'd say on the field and there's so much pressures outside the field that you try and offload and you try and have your own space to clear your head like. Yeah, Kim, I, I hate to bring up Clare from the All-Ireland winning team but that team won one All-Ireland and then has largely broken up. There's still some of them that are there. How do you guys make sure that you're uh, a new version of the old Great Kilkenny team or even the tip team that come back and, and wins one another couple of years later as opposed to a single time, one time All-Ireland winning team? Uh, I suppose you just have to get your attitude right and I suppose a lot of it goes back to the mentality and the mental side of things like but for us it's about regrouping like I know this year we didn't achieve the All-Ireland but we still achieved a lot and for ourselves we're not satisfied with that we want more like and we want to come back and drive things on again I suppose the winter now will be short with the club and we'll be back at it again and back hurling again and I suppose after the All-Ireland I know we're still in the middle of the championship now at the moment but Next year will be a new year, and 2020 will open a new door, do you know? Yeah, and have you been to Barbados on the team holiday yet? Is that, is that finished? <laughs> no. Is that happening? Yet. Uh, yeah, it's in October there, like, right. it's a long way off now, as I said, we have club championship and work in the meantime, so... Plenty to think, nice nice, <laughs> nice thing in the horizon. Uh, it's great now, in fairness, JP and Noreen have been very good to us in Limerick Curling, like, so we appreciate it. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. Have you been, <laughs> looking, at, have you been looking at the brochures? Yeah, have, yeah, in fairness, we're kind of... Yeah. Mouth watering stuff looking at it, but I suppose that's kind of side to us too. Like for us as players, we want to be able to achieve what we can achieve on the hurling field and then enjoy that stuff aside from I suppose this week's going to be hard for us as players to kind of watch the build up for Kilkenny and Tip. And I suppose we kind of sacrifice everything to get back to an iron final again, John. Yeah, so I hope you can use the pain to your own ends. Got You've got a really good club team. Is there like, you know, not to put pressure on it, the Limerick <laughs> Championship is very, is very difficult, but like, yeah. Everybody who's in it, who's at that level, must be thinking, if we could just get everything right this year, yeah, something no. could happen. It is wide open, like, you know, you've, the Pierce are obviously our massive favourites, like, and there's some great players, like, but Kilmallock doing it there ourselves, South Liberty's like, it's wide open, so I suppose just keep our heads down, and as I say, it's, it's a totally different thing to come back from your county, but it's a great way of getting back into routine and getting your confidence back up, and I suppose, as I said before, and I said again, like, your club is where you start and it's where you finish, so 
Hopefully we can drive on. Keen, enjoy the game this weekend. If that's possible, thanks very much for popping into us in the studio today. Uh, Keen was in with us in more, this was in with us this morning rather with thanks to Centra's We Are Hurling campaign. You can use that hashtag We Are Hurling to see how Centra continue to champion the hurling community across Ireland. Check them out on Twitter and also on Instagram and Facebook. 